ว้าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่เราจะเริ่มต้นด้วยการขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ทุกคนได้รับการช่วยเหลือจากพระเจ้าขอบคุณที่ท
It's, it's that simple. With Boosie, um, same thing. People might want to say, well, you know what it is? Boosie and T.I. have both done jail time, right? And people are look at the fact that where well, they've done jail time or they've represented this in the past, but do people have to be held down to that image that you have of them forever? Do they? That's not how God works. God is literally on a daily basis like, yo, I just want you to repent. I just want you to have a heart that desires me. You heard me? Christ, Jesus Christ showed us, like, okay, all these people who were previously big, heavy sinners, oh, they fool around. They're disciples now. They are apostles. They are walking this, walking this walk, walking this earth with Jesus, helping him to carry out his, his God-given mission. Like, this is a real thing, man. Like, people got the ability to really transform right in front of our face. And we got to salute that. So to the fans who I'm speaking to right now, um, it's your job to really salute that. Uh, Boosie and T.I., their sons, I'm sure they partially look at it like, man, we just young. We just doing what's popular. And understand that young people are going to do what's popular because that's a low-hanging fruit. And they look at it like, man, we almost feel like we got a reputation to uphold because if this is what our fathers are known for, they could feel like, shoot, that's the, that's the image that got my dad rich and famous, so I want to go down that route, right? When you're young, um, whether or not y'all know it, as y'all are listening to this, that is the norm for a lot of young creators is, I mean, if I sit here and rap gun with fun with one, which y'all better run, you heard me, with my Uzi wear a ton, like that type of stuff, that's very easy. That's that's very easy to freestyle or to go in the booth and make that type of music. And I know because my first ever rap, in case y'all never heard my first ever rap, I wrote this when I was in high school. I'm going to omit some of the words because I don't want to say them on air. But my first ever rap, uh, I wrote this because at the time I found out that one of my homies was rapping and I was like, dang, that's pretty dope. Like, my dude actually be, like, rapping, and he he had spit some stuff for us at school. And, I, you know, I was like, almost like FOMO, fear of missing out. I was like, man, I could do that, or I want to do that. So I remember writing this. I wrote it to an old Lil Wayne beat, and I spit it for one of my basketball teammates right before we had a game. And I was like, Nick, I'm real, cause if you're fake, it'll get you killed. Snitches know the deal, they get bust open if they squeal. And when it's time to ride, you know it's time to die. Haters had better hide, or I'ma let them fly. Um, you better watch your life, what did they all know? Lil Deezy ride at night, what I dip low? And I'm strapped up tight, what Like, basically some of them was old Lil Wayne boys. Duct tape your mama and shoot off and your wife, what <laughs> Yeah, that was partially, partially that was old Lil Wayne bars that I know nobody was going to know that that was his bars. But part of that was me with my own bars. First, first ever rhyme. And that's only eight bars. I think it was a whole 16 that I had written. Man, I ain't never bust a gun in my life. So what the heck was, the heck was D1 talking about on that? But that's the first rap that I ever wrote, y'all. And I know that for a young a young brother, especially coming up, that is just like a low hanging fruit, especially if you grow up a young black man that has been normalized to us, that that's just what people rap about. That's popular amongst our peer group. So it's very easy to fall into making that type of music. So I really salute Boosie and T.I. for taking that stand. And I really hope that it resonates with their sons. I hope that I hope that there was more dialogue that took place outside of what we saw on camera, you hear me? Um, because that dialogue is real, especially if their sons really respect their fathers, the way I'm assuming that their sons respect them, that dialogue goes a long way. I can still remember my grandpa pulling me to the side and having some real talk with me about a few things that I was partaking in that he didn't approve of, that he was aware of. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes because of how much I hold my grandpa in high regards and how much I respected him. Uh, he just passed away uh, a little more than a year ago. And I remember that talk. And I remember walking out of that room 
like really feeling upset that I had disappointed him. So the power for a parent or a loved one to really like pour into their son specifically, like on a man to man level, it's there. It's real. You know, it's real. So boosting T.I., man, keep it up, man. Keep the growth up. You heard me? Big salute from D1 on the uh, Flipping Tables podcast with D1. Believe that. So, and, and all the fans that's watching this, make sure that that's the type of stuff we're applauding and we're not applauding, you know, the foolishness inside of hip-hop. I want to talk about something else that took place, though. <sighs> Offset and Cardi B. You hear me? Offset and Cardi B are apparently getting a divorce. And Offset and Cardi B have been married for... Multiple years now, I don't know exactly how many years. Let's just, I'm just gonna throw a number out there. Let's say seven, eight, eight years. You heard me? Something like that. Um, no matter how many years they've been married, they got three kids together and they are two huge uh, public figures. So, of course, their relationship has been very public. And because their relationship has been public, unfortunately, a lot of the drama has played out publicly. So, the cheating uh, accusations and just the instances of Offset apparently cheating on Cardi B, that's played out publicly. Um, Cardi B being upset, being heartbroken, uh, clapping back at him online, that's played out on social media. Uh, I say this with a grimace in my face because uh, it's not it's not good. It's not, it's not healthy, you know. Um, and I really wish that things could work out for them because they're married. And because they have three kids together, I would really love to see things work out. I know it's tough. I know you can't just snap your finger and everything be perfect. Um, because when there's been, I guess, multiple instances of the cheating, and I'm sure just a lot of damage done and trust being um, uh, damaged and and hindered because of what they've gone through publicly and privately, it's tough. Uh, Cardi B came out and I guess apparently on social media confirmed that she ended up sleeping with another dude while she was pregnant. Um, man, all this stuff makes me grimace, honestly, because it's not something to be proud of. But once again, fans, the people that's watching this, people be entertained by this. And people just want to take sides and be like, yep, that's what he get. He cheated on her so many times. That's what he get. And there's other people that's like, oh, she down bad for that. And that, that makes her this type of woman and that type of woman. Man, Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. We, we, we could do better. We could do better. I find a lot of this stuff just being how I'm seeing uh, fans respond to this stuff. And it's just indicative of the fact that um, what they have going on is nothing but entertainment to people. You know, and it's sad because they've really gone through this in real life. Like, they've really gone through it. So, man, that stuff... That stuff, that stuff is uh that stuff is rough. I think seeing offset a few years back come on stage when Cardi B was performing, he interrupted her performance, right? I ain't see this video till recently. I be out the loop with a lot of stuff, you hear me? Like I I, I really do. But I saw that he had came on stage, interrupted her performance to apologize to her and to ask her to take him back, right? It seems as if Offset really loves Cardi B. Like, he really does love her, for sure. Because you're not even going to go through all that stuff with somebody who you don't have no feelings for. You're just going to be like, oh, well, I guess that ran its course. On to the next, right? So clearly, he loves her. And if it's something to where he's continued to um, be unfaithful, then it's probably something to where definitely prayer is needed. Definitely an intervention like uh, therapy is probably needed. Uh, there's a lot of healing that's needed. And I really pray that like if we're going to talk about like people's real lives, especially on this show and what's going on, if you're going to talk about people, you should be willing to pray for people. So if I'm talking about Offset and Cardi B and what they got going on, if we're talking about Boosie and T.I. Sons and what they got going on, we should also be willing to myself and everybody watching this, be willing to pray for them for the best outcome to come from these uh, these situations. Because this is real life that people dealing with and going through. It's just playing out publicly, you hear me? So uh, with all said and Cardi B, I know that there's love there on both ends. And hopefully that stuff could work out because 
uh, divorce, man, you know, that, man, we got too much divorce, man. We got too much, ah, we got too much divorce, yo. Um, in the world, in hip hop, we just got too much of that. Um, when it come to Offset and, and Cardi B, uh, my brother Jay, you got anything, you got any, um, any thoughts or opinions or, or questions when it, when it come to that stuff? Cause it honestly, it, it, it make my face grimace just the more I think about it and see it playing out. Like, yeah, bro. I think, um, it's, I think you said it earlier. Like when you have these public relationships, nobody really want to see you, um, succeed, succeed. Right. And it's like, Part of me feel like people do want to see you succeed, but because so many people have like issues with their their own self and their relationships, it it kind of feeds them to see you have issues as well because it's like, yeah, they just like me. And that's sad, but that's just how we are as people. Mm. They say misery loves company. Right. And not even just um intentionally, it's just like you want people to feel what you feel so you can feel validated in some sense. And that's man. I don't agree with that, but it's that that'd be life, man. That'd, that'd be life. Hurt people hurt people, and hurt people love love to uh see other hurt people and yeah the misery loves company piece is real also i always go back to this song title from ti bro um my life your entertainment man that's on the paper trail album bro it's so real cuz i just see that like you'll be nothing but a meme and a hashtag to people and just a quick joke online for people when they see that your relationship is falling apart or you are heartbroken or them, everybody want to be a therapist. Everybody want to give advice. But then oftentimes people giving advice, not from a godly place, but from just a hurt place. And uh, I'm going through it myself, you know, type of place. And whether or not adults want to admit it, like adults be looking to other public figures to actually have some sort of a, a rubric to say, Oh, this is how this person handled this situation. I'm in a similar situation. This kind of provides me some sort of a, a standard or a benchmark to see how this got handled, you know? So that's why, man, when it come to this public stuff, I really be wanting this stuff to play out for the best. Like I, I really do, man, because not only does it impact these uh, very powerful public figures, in this instance, rappers, but it's a lot of other people, man. To go back to the first segment, there's a lot of people that's at the crib that's knowing that their sons are rapping about being murderers and rapping about catching bodies and got guns in their music videos. There's a lot of mothers and fathers who who know that, right? And they're trying to figure out, do I remain silent about this? Because maybe my son is going to blow up and become a famous rapper and they can help our whole family out financially. There's a lot of people that's thinking about that. Or do I say something just because, no, that's not good. I don't want my son caught up in that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's there's a lot of videographers. Man, boy, I know these people personally. There's a lot of videographers who don't stand for that at all, but the only people that want to hire them to shoot music videos are people that want to make a bunch of murder music and want to have guns flashing all in the camera, right? And these videographers, I have talked to them and they be like, I be scared sometimes. I don't want this gun to go off. I don't want the police to come on the block where we shooting at, you heard me, and arrest somebody. I don't want the ops to come on the block where we shooting at and start being the people that they shooting at, you heard me? Like, this, these are real conversations with videographers and people being these dilemmas, man. These dilemmas in hip hop are real. So when you see a Boosie and a T.I. that's standing up and wanting something different for their sons and confront, confronting it in the moment, that's powerful. And I believe that that can give a lot of inspiration to a lot of people that's at the crib that's going through these mental dilemmas, you heard me? There's... There's DJs that's married and that's raising kids and that's going to the club and playing a bunch of music for other people to dance and party to and get drunk to that they're not even allowing their music to be played in their own crib because they know, oh, no, we're not finna listen to this. My kids, I'll be doggone if my kids finna listen to that. And I know this, but they mentally block it out because they're like, Man, I, I'm getting paid off of this. You know what I'm saying? So these are real life dilemmas in hip hop that we see people going through. So that's why, like, I don't want to see 
the worst for any of these people that's going through this stuff publicly, man. Like, I, I just really don't. And there's always a godly solution or a godly perspective and take to have on this stuff that's, that's going on publicly, you heard me? Uh, which brings me to a topic I've been waiting to get to. Charlemagne from The Breakfast Club. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. I got to play this clip from Charlemagne. Charlemagne went on air and recently spoke about how, yo, D1 is right. He said, hold on, let me, I don't want to misquote the brother. D1 is right. He's just right about all of this. The whole state of the culture, everything. And Charlemagne was talking about how, I'm going I'm to I'm play the clip, you heard me. Um, I love having this podcast. But we're going to play the clip, but yeah. Um, I am so sorry the family of young Dolph has to relive all of this trauma, have to listen to these two young men speak about taking a life like they just made so a run. Aimlessly. Like they just made a run to the store real quick. Like, like I clicked on that link yesterday on YouTube and realized I wanted no parts of it. The Law and Crime YouTube channel, that's mm -hmm. what it's called? Yeah, mm -hmm. where you can watch in court. They had two trials going on at the same time. I think it was the Young Thug YSL trial. Mm -hmm. And then hearing all that stuff from the Young Dolph trial, and we're not the young Dolph trial. What's the two guys' name? Because uh, young Dolph is not on trial here. What's the Cornelius Smith uh, and uh, Justin Johnson? Yes, and all I kept thinking to myself was, you know what? D one is right. What? He's just right about all of this. The whole state of the culture, everything. Push, and I'm just telling the artists, like, bro, we know, like, we made it from that. We shouldn't have to be glorifying that stuff. There's a difference between narration and glorification. Mm -hmm. You feel me? When you narrating something, man, I came from this hood. I came from the east side, Night Water, New Orleans. I seen this. My best friend got killed. Glorification is, look, I'm going to be the one to come when I get off Breakfast Club and come merc something. I'm going to be the one to come mm. slide on my ops. I'm going I'm to give my young boy a bag to go and, and get you dead. You know what I'm saying? We are content with the glorification of drug dealing and murdering and disrespecting our women. And that's a problem, bro. Charlemagne talking about, dang, seeing young Dolph's killers on trial, seeing that Young Thug is on trial, hearing about like how people just had a bag put on their head, like, yo, we're going to pay you this much to go kill this person, and seeing everything that's playing out, he's just like, man, he, he was thinking about it from the standpoint of the families that's having to relive this trauma, and... Man, my heart goes out to the families, all the families that's been impacted by this, all the families. And I even think about the hip hop community because the 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 scary part is, and this is for Charlemagne, this is for everybody else. When we think about it, the, the real scary part is the hip hop community don't even look at it like it's trauma. The hip hop community look at it like it's entertainment on a daily basis. People can't wait to go comment under the YouTube videos of Lil Woody at the Young Thug trial or giving their little two cents on what's going on or putting a bunch of uh, dolphin emojis underneath the Instagram page of the dude that killed Young Dolph or the dudes that killed Young Dolph or saying this or that or the third in the comments. It ain't nothing but entertainment to people, man. And that's real scary when something that's traumatic and sad and tragic is really entertainment for a bunch of people fans y'all gotta be held accountable man gotta be held accountable at this point there gotta be some accountability when it comes to the fans i'm sitting here looking at this video like a lot of this stuff just make me cringe at this point like i said the whole the whole hip-hop culture and system as we know it is broken at this point it has been too many years 30 some odd years of negativity evil, ratchetness, coonery, and buffoonery being glorified. The whole system is broke. So we need to throw it all away. We need to throw it all away as we know it, throw the whole hip-hop culture away as we know it, and then selectively say, we want this back, we want this back, we want this back. But it, like I said, it's like a car that has been totaled out. When a car got too much damage done to it, what they say at the insurance uh, company, oh, we got to total this car out. It ain't that the car is totally in pieces, but it just got too much damage done to it. So we got to total it out. And from there, we'll still give you something for it, but we got to total that mug out. That's what's happened to hip-hop culture at this point. 
It's been ran through, you heard me? It's been damaged that bad. It got hit by an 18-wheeler, you heard me? It got hit by an 18-wheeler. It's total doubt, man. Feel how you want about that. But, uh, you know, we want this space to be better. So uh, that brings me to the Platinum Pledge. Uh, if you're watching this, hopefully when I say the Platinum Pledge, your ears perk up if you're listening to this because you have already signed the Platinum Pledge. People leading a transformation involving newly unified mindsets. That's what Platinum stands for. I came up with this uh, at the top of 2024, and I actually put a name to it, but I've been on this for like, shoot, the longest, honestly, for like the last... 10 years. I had a song called The Pledge that came out in 2015. I only put it on SoundCloud and it was basically about this. Just saying, we no longer want to create, consume, or promote music that is glorifying murder, drug dealing, drug usage, disrespecting women, and sexual irresponsibility. So uh, the Platinum Pledge is now, it's a whole community of its own with all the people who have signed it. I need y'all to go sign the Platinum Pledge. It's on my website, d1music.com. It's going to take you exactly two seconds from the time you get on the site to click it and to just sign your name. And bam, if you truly feel like that. D-E-E, the number one, music.com. Go sign the Platinum Pledge. The whole community that's been built from there and being built this is something where I want to be able to show people that we ready for the change. We ready for the shift and we willing to be part of the shift. If y'all want to know the truth, there's some people who really rock with me and really support me. And they be like, man, I just ain't there yet, D. I still like hearing the murder music. Or I still like making the music that's glorifying drug dealing or glorifying drug usage. Or I still like hearing the music that's disrespecting us as women. You hear me? I still like bumping it. I still like partying to it, turning up to it. Some people say that. What can I do except respect it and be like, well, everybody ain't there. Everybody ain't there to want to be part of the shift. But at least they being honest. And at least they know that something like this exists. And they can start to work to wrap their brains around it. You hear me? But during my lifetime, oh, no. Like, I, I can't just sit back and turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to the industry that I'm in and knowing how much better we could do as hip hop. Uh, I've seen my music literally change people's lives. I have so many testimonies that I can give and that's just the ones I've been exposed to that people have told me about in terms of how my music has played a, a role in their life leveling up, in their relationship with God leveling up. So... For the naysayers and the people who may say, well, why you just talk about this a lot? Why you don't talk about what's going on uh, in this war more? Or why you don't talk about what's going on in this other industry more? Or in the video game industry or the music industry? Um, none of us has the bandwidth and the capacity to be super vocal and outspoken about every single issue that's going on in the world. That's why God made me and you. Because what I'm passionate about is going to be like me saying, hey, I'm going to go in here, you heard me? Because this is my area of passion and expertise. You got a different area of passion and expertise? Go in on that. And guess what? We teammates at the end of the day. Teammates of righteousness. You feel me? So, man, hold on. Y'all, I'm getting a text. I love when I get texts on my, um, let me see. Okay, I think I could change it. Uh, I could change it. Word. So that's um that's a business text, you heard me. They uh okay. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look into this one. Hold on. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to look. Oh man, I love having my podcast because I could just tell y'all I'm not on somebody else's podcast where I gotta be like, oh, that's unprofessional. I can't read this. Um yeah, shout out to man, like being a songwriter is amazing. So uh being a songwriter and you know, receiving the 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 writing royalties that come along with me being a writer is great so this is one text in regards to that because i definitely um i enjoy being a writer you know what i'm saying yeah i i just i i enjoy it like it's my pastime it's my hobby i love writing i, I love rap and i love performing but I, I still love the writing part and then the other text is in regards to my children's book and depending on when y'all watch this or listen to it 
Or uh, it may just so happen to be October, you heard me? It may happen to be anti-bullying month. And with that being said, I have an anti-bullying hip-hop children's book called David Found His Slingshot. Uh, I will go run to my whip and go get one, but this is my podcast. And guess what? We can flash it on the screen right now uh, if you're watching this. Um, so, bam, David found his slingshot available right now on my website. We independent, you heard me? We we straight indie with it. Um, thank you to the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people who have gotten the book. And anyone who hasn't, I I definitely recommend you get it, especially if you have a young person in your life because this is going to teach them how to respect their classmates and their peers, uh, even despite their differences. I used to get bullied when I was a kindergartner back in New Orleans, and me and my former bully are best friends to this day. That's my dog, you feel me? And uh, I know that we were able to build a bridge uh, as opposed to as opposed to just building walls, you know, between us. So David found his slingshot is the children's book, and uh, I'll be going on tour this November and December with my man, Brother Ali, and we're going to 23 cities around the country, so I'm definitely going to have the children's books with me there, but y'all could get it online and make sure y'all get that. So this is um this is something where I told y'all, y'all keep showing up, and I'm uh, I'm showing up as well, you feel me? Y'all keep showing up, I'm showing up as well for this. Flipping Tables uh, podcast with D1, and we got to flip these tables knowing that life is going to keep life and on a daily basis. So if you love God and if you have a relationship with hip hop, make sure that God always comes before hip hop in terms of what's most important to you. And make sure that the way that you interact with hip hop is predicated on and based on godly principles. Not hip-hop principles, because hip-hop is out of whack. Hip-hop is lost and confused and wretched and negative and got so much evil that it's been infiltrated with that we can't uh, operate in the space of hip-hop as consumers, creators, or commissioners based on hip-hop or street principles. We got to operate in hip-hop with godly principles. That's powerful. That's powerful. And so is this podcast. And so are you, you heard me? So uh, thank y'all. Make sure you get my new album loaded out right now. Go stream that thing. Life of a Disruptor, Evolving Daily. Go stream that. Um, put somebody else on the podcast. I think we almost at uh, 200,000, you heard me, subscribers. Uh, and that's just on YouTube, you heard me. Um, when this is up on the audio platforms, I don't know if they keep count, but make sure y'all subscribe to that as well on the audio platforms. But Man, 200,000? We're going to have to throw us a little party. We're going to have to do something special when we hit that 200K. So make sure you subscribe on the YouTube. Like this, share this, and put somebody on, man. I'm really grateful. Shout out to my brother, Jay. Um, thank you, brother. I appreciate, um, you know, pulling. Uh, I appreciate people who uh, help me pull the best out of myself, you know. And oftentimes, I'm not going to lie, y'all, um, behind this head wrap and these locks, um, I get in my own head, you hear me? I get in my own head about things. And sometimes getting in my own head prevents me from getting thoughts and ideas and creativity and visions out of my head, you feel me? So um, much love and respect to y'all, and I'll see y'all next time.